Hey guys, Lewis here with premiumbeat.com and today we're going to have a look at how to export a video in DaVinci Resolve. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't caught my videos before, I am a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and I like to make my tutorials fun, some animations, a little bit of witty banter. However, exporting a video is quite a formal process, so let's get started formally. With our edit completed, sound effects added and grade implemented, it's time to go to the delivery page. Resolve, unlike other software that may have a pop-up box, has an entire page devoted to rendering your content. Let's have a look at the layout. To the left, we have our render settings. In this panel, we will set all the parameters for how we want our video to be rendered. In the center, we have a preview monitor where we can watch back the edit that one final time before hitting render. It is important to note that unlike the editing page where the scrubbing tool scrubs through the entire timeline quickly, this only scrubs through each clip. So please take note, it operates slightly different. To the right, we have our render queue where the selected clips will be put out to render. Underneath is our timeline, which mirrors the timeline found on the edit page. However, we cannot make any adjustments. We cannot mute the tracks. We cannot disable a video clip. We cannot trim a clip. It is just for reference. Let's head to our first pit stop, the render panel. If you're brand new to editing and still feel unsure about adjusting the export settings, Resolve will help you streamline that process with a set of one-click presets. From a YouTube upload or audio only, the presets are perfect for quick exports. First, we have our file name and destination location. This is where you would name your file and where you'd want your file to be rendered. Next, we have individual or single clips. So what does this mean? Well, our timeline is made up of numerous clips, right? The idea of exporting is to combine all of this into one. Well, perhaps we want to render out low resolution files to edit on our laptop. Well, when selecting individual clips, Resolve will render each video clip as opposed to one large video file. If you are rendering to create playback for any files, it would be worth also jumping over to the file submenu found here, where you can then select use source name. So your low resolution files follow the same file name, which makes it easier when replacing these low resolution files with your high resolution files. After that, we have former and codec. This is not something that you can typically recommend as each project may require a different form of encoding. But for online encoding, the preferred format is QuickTime with a H.264 codec. And you could also push for the even friendlier H.265. Underneath we have our resolution, and you're going to want the resolution to mirror the size of the timeline. If you try to render 4K when you have a 1080p timeline, even with 4K clips, you will get a warning message. So if you have been editing 4K media in a 1080 timeline, make sure to revert the timeline settings to 4K. However, you are able to render a 4K timeline to a 1080p video, which is called downsampling. And of course, we want our frame rate to correspond to our timeline settings. Again, quality, like the codec, is going to depend on the requirements of your platform you're rendering for, but between me and you, I do like just to stick it at best and deal with the larger sized video files. These primary functions, the file name, location, format, codec, resolution, frame rate, and quality, dictate the core component of your render, and I would argue, the only aspects you're going to need to touch if you are here watching this video. If you need to change the audio settings or the file settings, you can do that by hitting the audio or file button, which will swap out the sub panel. If you want to render your video without audio at all, instead of going back to the edit and muting the tracks, we could just deselect this checkbox. For the final setting, we're going to head to the timeline and look at this drop down menu. Instead of rendering entire timeline, we can select render in and out range using the same keyboard shortcuts that we use on the edit page to create a selection, I and O. Perhaps we just want one scene to send to the actor for their reel or something like that. And what's great is that when you create a selection and then add it to the render queue, you can go back and create various other in and out points and add them to the render queue and they will all render separate so you don't have to individually do this one render at a time. And as you've just seen, after you've adjusted all of your settings, all you do is hit add to render queue Then over on the render panel, we are ready to hit render. That's it. So let's recap. Enter the delivery page, review your footage one final time using the timeline viewer if you haven't done so already. Set the file name and destination location, adjust the format, codec and quality to best suit the delivery and make sure the resolution and frame rate matches that of your project settings. Press add to render queue and then select start render. This is how you export a video in DaVinci Resolve. Okay guys, this has been Lewis with Premium Beat and the basics of exporting. Any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll keep an eye out for them. Catch you next time.